Hey, aloha, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Security Matters. No need to adjust your screen. Our intrepid host, Andrew Lanning, is taking a well-deserved break this week. My name is Cameron Javdani. I'm the president and co-founder of SoundSecure, and with some very big shoes to fill today, guest hosting in Andrew's place. But we have a special guest to help me carry the load, Derek Vandervorst, the owner and founder of Sound Intelligence, here today to talk about a number of different audio issues with analytics, sound processing, and what we can do for security systems. If you caught last week's episode, you would have heard about the new SIA Audio Working Group, and I'm thrilled to announce that Derek has joined as a part of it with one of the subcategories of that working group having to do with the analytics. Derek, welcome to Security Matters. Thank you, Karen. Good morning. Good morning to you. Now, Tell us a little bit about your history with audio. Uh, you and I have known each other for a few years, so I've heard some of your backstory, but tell us about all the years you've spent doing audio projects in security or unrelated to security, and then how you found yourself working with the security industry. Yeah, sure, sure. So my career started with um, uh, Philips Electronics, um, the Dutch uh, kind of uh, large electronics company. Um, I started working uh, with them in, in Japan and then Hong Kong on audio products. So I was actually a product, ma product manager for their very first MP3 player back in the 90s. Um, I was then transferred to Silicon Valley and I worked for their speech recognition group. That's kind of where my audio you know, enthusiasm changed over to kind of the, the recognition of audio, but then specifically for, for speech recognition. Um, and um, at the end of that kind of, um, 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 you know, actually we sold off that business to another company, I was introduced to Sound Intelligence, which was a, a spin-off out of the University of, of Groningen uh, in the Netherlands. And um, the, the main thoughts behind Sound Intelligence were to see if, 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 if they could use technology to improve speech recognition, to separate sound sources. Um, but actually, the, by the time that I kind of um, uh, got on board, we had a few customers asking for very specific security related topics like de detecting aggression in people's voices. So that's kind of the, the, the history. Um, and and yeah, from there, we've, we've developed uh, into you know, supporting many more sound detectors. Very interesting. And uh, you know, I think a lot of folks in our industry are familiar with video analytics. Uh, that's more commonplace now. And we've seen a rise in using video analytics for temperature detection for things like COVID screening in the last few months. But audio tends to work very differently than video will. Talk about, if you would, some of the types of sound analytics that you've developed with sound intelligence, some of the products that you offer, and, and how they're different in terms of the application that some people might be familiar with from video. Yeah, sure. Um, now, the, 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 like, I, like I mentioned, aggression detection is, is, is kind of our, our, where we started in, in security. So it was the city of, of, of Groningen where we were founded. Um, the, 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 the Justice Department in the Netherlands and actually the, the National Rail Company who had a big problem with people getting aggressive against their, their, their employees. Um, so they asked us, can you, you know, figure out uh, and, and trigger an alert when there's, a, uh, there's aggression? And that's where we started. Um, over the years, we added other sound detectors to that. So, of course, gunshot detection is an important one uh, that, we, that we've supported since, uh, I think, about 2009. Um, we added glass break detection to it, uh, car alarm detection. Um, and over the years, we've actually also uh, um, looked at another vertical, which is healthcare, where it's more about remote patient observation to recognize you know, sounds related to epileptic seizures or sleep apnea or panic attacks. And actually, what's interesting is that you, you mentioned some of the COVID applications. Um, since 2014, we've um, supported coughing detection in our healthcare products to basically help nurses at nighttime uh, be alerted when, when a patient has a, you know, a severe coughing uh, situation uh, that needs help. Um, obviously with COVID, people have asked us, hey, can you detect coughs and can you count coughs and, and tell us what's the baseline and, and alert us when, when you know, the numbers are higher than that. So we have actually done that more recently in the, in the, in the, in the security product as well. That's, that's very interesting because you just mentioned five or six or seven different use cases, different types of industries that are all using sound in different ways. You mentioned the police, you mentioned train stations, you mentioned healthcare. 
which have wildly different needs when it comes to security systems. But one common element is that they like to use sound to detect these, these different events. Well, and, and it's like, like we as humans, right? We, uh, most people can, can hear and use their ears very effectively in, in, if there's an incident or even you know, for other things. I mean, if something falls on the ground, you immediately turn around because you heard it first and then you, you watch. So um, uh, traditionally, security systems have been deaf or uh, you know, just been relying on the video part of it. Um, but that means that you know, it's very difficult to be very proactive with it. And of course, you know, video analytics can be a, a, a great addition to your, your system. Um, but we believe that audio is, is as important, or maybe even more, more important for certain uh, you know, behaviors that you want to detect. So you mentioned when you hear a loud noise or you hear some kind of event, your head snaps around and you look towards it. And you can probably tell the difference between, say, someone slamming a dumpster closed and a gunshot because you know, I've heard countless numbers of sounds through all the years of my life. So my brain can tell the difference pretty well. How do you go about developing an analytic based upon those nuances in different types of sounds so that your algorithm can tell the difference between this is just a loud noise and some kind of commotion that we can ignore versus actually being some kind of security risk? Well, and, and, and that is the, the, the magic, right? That's, that's where we, we try to you know, continuously develop better and better algorithms. And when we started, it was a bunch of really smart uh, PhDs um, in, in acoustics that were listening to sounds and were kind of manually figuring out what are the characteristics of different sounds to, and, and filter them out and, and, and differentiate them from each other. Um, over the years, we've, we've grown into using machine learning. Um, uh, but then most recently, in the last, I would say, four or five years, we've really moved to deep learning, where you use complex, you know, multi-layer neural networks um, that work on a very large data set of sounds um, uh, to recognize these sounds. And, and basically, we, we don't even know anymore what are the differences in the sound that the algorithms use. It's, it's um, um, basically the algorithms figuring it out themselves. And the, the input for that is, like, like your example, like we as humans build up a sound library over the years that we live, uh, we've, over, the, over the, the lifetime of sound intelligence, have been able to build up a very large database of sounds of all kinds of environments with which we train the algorithms. And, and, and that's, really, that's really how it works. Now, the question that I always hear, and I know you hear as well, is whenever we deploy some type of audio application in any of the, the different types of installations you mentioned for healthcare, for law enforcement, for transportation applications, we're always asked the question, well, what about privacy? And how can we be sure that we're not listening into people when they don't want to be listened in on? Uh, for sound seekers purposes on purely the hardware side, uh, we provide ways to give people notification that audio recording is taking place. And the way someone might do that will vary based upon the type of facility that they have. But talk about the privacy implications of these analytics. If, if you're listening for aggression detection, and you hear me make a threat towards you or, or towards someone, is that what the analytic is, is picking up on? How do you manage those privacy expectations? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And I mean, it's a very important question, of course. We, we wanna make sure that our technology, you know, is, is privacy friendly and is not intruding on anyone's privacy. So if you look at, at the total system, you know, our system is just part of a piece of the puzzle, right? So you need, um, you know, you need the hardware, like the microphones, the cameras, et cetera, to pick up on the, the signals, whether that's video or audio or some other sensor. Um, then you need the analytics, which is, is our, our component. And then once we've detected a sound, it needs to go to, you know, an operator, a human to verify what's happening. And we integrate with most, you know, video management systems or security management systems to do that. And, and if you look at the total system, the, 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 the end customer is, of course, responsible for managing the privacy. Now, if you look at our application, it's not interested in what people are saying. It's not listening for words. It doesn't do any speech recognition. Also, because that is you know, pretty impossible with the current state of technology if you look at you know, the way these sensors are being used. Now, I know that people are getting used to having you know, your Amazon Echo with a microphone array that kind of filters out the, the background noise. But if you look at the systems that, that we rely on, they're omnidirectional microphones 
that are, have difficulty in you know, specifically filtering out certain sounds. Now, if you look at our application, it doesn't record any audio. It just analyzes the audio as a signal in real time. And if it detects a sound that is relevant, like a gunshot or a breaking glass or, or somebody screaming, it will send an alert to the security management system. Now, then it's up to the configuration of the security management system whether it's important for the operator to hear the audio in, in case of an incident. And some customers say, well, no, we, we don't want to present the audio. We will just use the video to verify the incident, which, which can work fine for many customers. Um, there's other extremes where certain customers actually record audio continuously, which we would, you know, not normally recommend. It's something that you want to be very careful about. You know, technically that's possible, but you want to be extremely careful. We, we would not recommend that, and it's not necessary for our system to work. But there's something in the middle, which we call the buffer mode, which is where in the, in the video management system, you set it up that it will buffer a few seconds of audio, which will automatically be deleted if there's no incident. But if there is an incident, it will record that video, sorry, that audio, alongside with the video, so an operator can verify what's happening. And um, if you look at the privacy aspects of that, um, you know, people who start shooting guns or who are starting uh, to shout aggressively, they can have no reasonable expectation of privacy. So recording a, a, a buffer of a few seconds before and after a, a detection is legal in all 50 states of the US. You, you mentioned a, a handful of different technologies in there to coincide with the privacy applications, notably Amazon Alexa or Echo Dots, or if you have any kind of smart home technology that uses voice commands to, to activate the closing your windows or turning on the lights. And those are microphones that are always on. Um, interestingly, though, you mentioned the omnidirectional aspects of microphones that you used and the fact that these microphones don't filter out noise. How important is that for the performance of the application to either have just a specific frequency that you're trying to listen in for or to have a broad spectrum of all the ambient sounds, which the algorithm then goes through and decides whether or not to alarm? Well, and, and, and you make a very good point. You, you see that, you know, depending on the application, you want to, you know, choose the right uh, hardware. So, I mean, of course, there are situations where audio analytics is, 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 is not an added value, and maybe you want to use your microphone purely for, um, you know, recording audio in, I don't know, um, you know, um, uh, interrogation rooms in police departments. Um, for that purpose, the, 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 the pickup range of the microphone should be, you know, say between 50 hertz and maybe 4,000 hertz, because that's where, you know, human voices uh, are, you know, basically um, um, are present. But if you look at the sound of, of glass break or gunshots, there's actually a lot of information above four kilohertz. So for the purpose of audio analytics, um, you need a microphone that picks up sound also higher than 4,000 4, hertz. And um, that's, that's kind of important uh, to choose the right components for, for the application. That's, a, I think, a key explanation on the differences between security technologies and what you might find in different consumer electronic devices and why one doesn't necessarily work with the other. We're gonna take a quick break here and pay a few bills. Stay tuned and we'll be right back with Derek Vandervorst of Sound Intelligence on this special edition of Security Matters.
Welcome back, everybody, to a special edition of Security Matters. We're here with Derek Vandervorst of Sound Intelligence talking about all things audio analytics, what the industry in security is learning from them, and different deployments. Derek, give us a little bit of the history of Sound Intelligence. You mentioned your work experience with Philips Electronics and then growing into Sound Intelligence and how some of the different analytics were designed by customer requests from law enforcement or transportation companies or, or even medical centers. But talk about the growth, if you will, of Sound Intelligence. It's a, a company based in the Netherlands. You recently opened up a North American office in Chicago. Tell us a little bit about how the company has evolved over time and what you see in terms of different applications between Europe and North America. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so, you know, if we, when we started, I think we, um, looking back, we were very early to the market. So we, we, um, we, we had technology, we thought it was, uh, we found an application for it that, that would be appealing to, to, to customers. And um, I think, you know, in the end we, we, we were right, but it's, it's taken a while before the market also uh, picked up. So I think the first few years, you know, our focus was to obviously develop the technology, get it to a certain level where you, you, you know, you, you filter out as, as much as possible, you can, uh, the, the false positives, uh, get a robust system, have a deployable and scalable system, uh, set up the organization to support your customers. Um, and of course, in parallel, build up your reference customers. And I think, you know, over the years, we've, we've gone from a, you know, a, a technology push, um, if I'm honest, uh, because nobody had heard about sound, sound detection before, uh, to a situation where now we are, you know, we're seeing a lot of demand in the market. So we, 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 we see a market pull now where, you know, um, customers ask for this technology in, in, in RFPs. Um, we're getting in, interest from all over the world. And we see that, you know, the growth is, is you know, has really the last couple of years has, has, has been, um, you know, pretty impressive. So going forward, I, I, I think, you know, we're, we're at the point where we are, you know, we're, we're able to really scale the technology, um, deploy it in thousands of locations. And, and, and that fits really well with what we see happening in the market. It's interesting you mentioned that the demand for this technology has been accelerating over the past few years. And for our purposes at SoundSecure, you know, we, we see the demand rising, not just for the security industry, but also being driven by consumer electronics and the different types of applications that, that those include. We, before the break about the differences between what you offer for sound detection and something like an Amazon product or, or a speech to text product, um, but the, the consumer electronics inclusion of audio in all devices, every smartphone, every laptop, I think increases the expectation for security systems that sound will be included. Are, are you seeing that, that driving the demand or is there some other reason that you're seeing um, audio analytics included in RFPs today? I think it's a combination, but you know, I don't know if, uh, uh, if you have an iPhone, uh, but people who do have an iPhone and, and that received the iOS four, uh, 14 uh, um, release, actually Apple included sound recognition in, in their latest uh, update. So people who are maybe bad of hearing can be alerted when their dog is barking, their baby's crying, or there's an appliance beeping uh, or the doorbell's ringing. So you know, a, a, a different application, very specific to consumer um, uh, use. But of course, Apple including that in their devices shows that you know sound detection is is becoming mainstream. So absolutely, you know the the, the developments on on the consumer side, I think have a big effect also on on uh, us here in the in the professional side. Now, where do you see the future of this analytics technology going? Is it driven by our industry? Is it driven again by consumer electronics? Are there new types of analytics that you're looking to develop and deploy? If, if you were to put the crystal ball on the table and gaze five years into the future for sound intelligence, what would you see? Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of opportunity there. I mean, I think, you know, the, the, the first thing is indeed um, uh, scaling this application. There's still so many, you know, schools, hospitals, um, and prisons, um, corporate offices that have issues with workplace violence, with aggression. And of course, the threat of, of, of gunshot is very real here in, in the US specifically. Um, that you know, having a system that will alert security staff um, uh, 
very quickly so you can respond much quicker and potentially save lives. I think that's 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 a that's a key advantage that we can offer. If you look look ahead, I think some of the new technologies, of course, revolving around AI and deep learning, uh, will will really you know increase further the accuracy of, of the systems. Uh, one new technology that we've introduced uh, recently is multi-sensor awareness, where multiple sensors will actually communicate between each other in kind of a mesh network in order to you know improve accuracy of the systems. Eliminate duplicate detections and also you know pinpoint the location of the of the, the alert better. Um, I also believe that in five years from yet from now, you know, sensor fusion will really happen. So where it's not just you know the audio signal that's being analyzed by the, the neural networks, but it's the combined video and audio, and maybe another sensor or multiple sensors being analyzed in parallel to you know start automating um, uh, responses. I think where we are now in the industry, human verification is essential because there could be a false positive, right? And you want to make sure that, that you give the operator all the information he needs to, to make a decision of what the appropriate response is. And if, 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 if you know, it was a bunch of kids fooling around that triggered the aggression detector, once you re uh, review that, you can say, okay, the, the correct response is to ignore this. But if it's somebody shouting at a, uh, like a customer shouting at, at a staff member, Obviously, you want to send a security guard. I think in, in, in five to 10 years from now, those responses can be more automated, where um, uh, maybe even you know, uh, robots could play a role in that uh, to autom automatically respond to certain uh, instances and, and de-escalate situations. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity uh, uh, if you look at the technology and, and, the, and the market for our current solutions. But then there's, I mean, we, of course, have, have, have plans and, and, and dreams in other areas. So you see that sound detection can be used for many other applications that we haven't actually um, uh, you know, explored in detail yet. But you can think of you know, noise pollution. Uh, you can think of traffic monitoring. Uh, you can think of um, condition monitoring, listening to machines if there's a defect. Uh, you can think of you know, maybe farming, listening to um, animals having certain behaviors that, that the big farmers want to be uh, alert about. I mean, there's there's many applications for this. In five to ten years, I, I do believe that we will have explored a, a few of those and 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 proven that technology can also be helpful in other in other cases. You mentioned the the faster response times, and and let's let's get in the time machine and go back to the present day from five years out. So today, in numbers uh, def different numbers of applications, you might have uh, someone or rather a, a algorithm listening for gunfire or listening for aggressive voices or breaking glass. And you mentioned how that can give you, the algorithm can give you a faster response time. What are some of the guidelines or recommendations or best practices that you've shared with customers to make sure one, that they can get that fast response time, but also two, you mentioned false alarms. How can we be sure that we're not responding to false alarms or calling first responders for something that is in fact not a security incident? Well, I think it, 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 our vision is that it, there, there's four main, main, main um, factors of that. Um, well, I guess I, I, I can add a fifth one, which is kind of a starting point. You know, a lot of people are focused on, on eliminating false positives. And while, of course, that is, that is our, our goal and, and our engineers uh, back in the Netherlands work on that every day, um, it's not the only thing to focus on because theoretically you can eliminate false positives by accepting false negatives, right? But that means you're potentially going to miss an actual event. And that's, we believe, far worse than, than having the occasional false positive. So if you look at, you know, when is a false positive a problem? Well, it's when there's too many false positives and it's a, it's a real nuisance. Or when you automate responses and, you know, you, you raise anxiety levels because you just locked down a whole building and played a message over the emergency notification system that there's, a, there's a, an active shooter while it's actually a false positive. So um, we believe that with our technology, the deep learning will help eliminate false positives as much as possible. Then the multi-sensor awareness where you triangulate between different sensors uh, will, will further help. The third part is integration into the existing system. So your existing video management systems, your uh, existing um, uh, processes and the, uh, and the fourth part is training the operators so that they know what to expect and know how to verify an alert and what actions to take. 
but working with you know uh, standard operating procedures based on uh, the, the different applications. Um, I, I think that is that is really where where which all needs to come together to, to have, a, have, a, have a good system. Well, just like any kind of video technologies using AI or using machine learning, this isn't a plug and play type application. Um, from from what I've seen and from what you've described, you want to make sure that the system is configured properly, that it's uh, it's configured for the environment you're putting it in. So a corrections facility is going to have very different acoustics than say an office building will. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, 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 if you look at our software, I would say you know three to five years ago, that was definitely the case. I think now with the latest version of the software, it will actually learn from the environment in the first week or, or, of deployment. And based on that, the system can, can be set to the right settings for that location. So it has become a lot more plug and play. Uh, and I think there we will see more advancements in the future as well. Fantastic. Derek, with just one minute left, tell us what you're hoping to accomplish with the SIA working group for audio and how you see the, the analytics offering that sound intelligence provides fitting in with the overall security landscape. Well, I, I think it's it's really to support this initiative and to support people getting more out of their security system. I think many um, of our customers have invested thousands of dollars into you know cameras, uh, video analytics, um, maybe panic buttons, things like that. But still, if there's an incident, there's no guarantee that they will be used effectively. So I think educating people how sound can play a role in in that total security um, system is, I think, part of what we're trying to accomplish. And of course, supporting uh, you know that that process of educating the market, and of course, hopefully, um, uh, selling a lot of uh, sound intelligence licenses in the process. Of course, of course, we'll see what we can do together. Uh, we are going to wrap the show. My grateful, uh, my, my excuse me, my my deep appreciation to you, Derek, for uh, being our guest here today on a special episode of Security Matters. And my gratitude as well to Andrew Lanning for giving us the opportunity uh, to appear on his show today. Andrew will be back next week, taking the reins back over. Uh, but for today, I'm Cameron Javdani with Derek Vandervorst. Thank you for tuning in for this week's special edition of Security Matters. Mahalo. <laughs>